Hey everyone, I'm John Wheeler, and in this video, I want to talk about green rooftops and why we need more of them in Red Deer in order to meet our environmental goals. Now to do this, I'm going to give you a tour of the old Bolodrome building downtown, which was recently renovated by Barry Architecture and Downey Roth Accountants. But first some context. Although this part of Red Deer looks very green, an aerial view of this part of our city looks way different. From up here you can see just how much ground is paved over. It's like a concrete umbrella. Rainwater that once soaked into the ground and slowly made its way to the river is now quickly diverted through storm ducts. On a large scale, this can lead to flooding and erosion problems downstream. This current design treats rainwater as a waste product instead of a resource. Another thing to consider is the heat island effect. This area was once a field full of plants that absorbed energy from the sun for photosynthesis, which in turn powered a diverse ecosystem. Energy from the sun is now absorbed by the dark rooftops and roadways as unwanted heat. On a larger scale, this effect adds up and can affect our health and happiness. There are better ways to do things. By designing our buildings to mimic nature and work within natural systems, we can save money, reduce our carbon footprint, and beautify our city. So in this video, I want to talk about those points. As it turns out, saving money and reducing our carbon footprint go hand in hand. But don't take it from me. Take it from one of Red Deer's most prestigious accounting firms, Downey Roth. Before they made the decision to upgrade this building to these high environmental standards, you bet they did the math. Dad, are those strawberries? Although this building costs about 10% more to build, savings on utilities are quickly generating a return on that investment. This building saves on air conditioning costs because the plants absorb energy from the sun that would otherwise be absorbed into the building as heat. This building collects free rainwater to be used in toilets. So instead of paying to have water pumped from the city just to be flushed down the toilet, this building is using a free resource. And although the rainwater isn't naturally soaking into the ground, it is being used to offset demand on our city's water supply. There's a pollinator hotel up here. When we build concrete umbrellas, we destroy, among other things, habitat for bees. And ladies and gentlemen, civilization needs bees. But don't get the impression that this is some kind of insect infestation. The bees that live here burrow into decaying wood, lay their eggs, and fly away to pollinate more food for us. This rooftop is an oasis for birds. Now, it's worth pointing out just how resilient nature can be when we work with her instead of against her. These cattails were not planted here. The seeds were brought in by the birds and the plants naturally took over. This rooftop is a wonderful and relaxing garden for employees to enjoy on their lunch break. And I'm sure we all know and understand the social benefits of having a workplace where employees can enjoy a little bit of nature. Daddy, Daddy, look, some pretty flowers! Let's go swim in them! Come on, come on! So this rooftop beautifies our city and makes it a better place to live and work. The profound realization that I've had after touring this building is that we treat resources like solar energy and rainwater as if it were waste. But if we were to treat them like assets and utilize them to their full potential, we can reduce our carbon footprint, beautify our city, and save money. When I consider how our city is growing and how we are going to keep paving over more prime farmland, I realize that we can do better. Green rooftops must be part of the bigger picture sustainability plan for our city. Large, flat rooftops like grocery stores, shopping malls, and industrial warehouses have immense potential to capitalize on free energy from the sun and free water from the clouds. The benefits are clear and the business argument is strong. This just makes sense. So, how can we encourage more buildings like this to be built in Red Deer? And how can we encourage more private businesses to invest in environmentally sustainable designs? I'd like to thank Downey Roth Accounting for the tour, and I'd like to thank all of you for watching. I would love to hear what you think. Please check out my Facebook page, my YouTube channel, and my Twitter handle. Cheers! Cheers.